coming this evening. This is the first, and the first I want to say, annual Entrepreneurship Expo and Award Ceremony that we've had. To start us off, I'd like to welcome you to the college, and we will have Sarah Garrett, our new Dean of Academic Affairs, welcome you to the college tonight. Sarah? Thank you, Phoebe. Good afternoon and welcome to Bristol Community College. As Professor Blackburn just said, I am the new Dean of Academic Affairs and Chief Academic Officer. And I really mean new. This is my third day at the college. I have been here in Fall River. I just moved to Fall River exactly seven days ago. And so um, <laughs> someone asked me, you're fanning. And all I could think about was all the boxes that I have at home. And someone said, well, you seem so organized. And I said, yes, I am. I've marked all the boxes. I've opened each of the tops. And that's what I'm living out of right now, out of the tops of each of the boxes. But I was so excited when um, uh, Executive Dean um, Feeney asked me to come and um, Professor Blackburn and uh, uh, our assistant dean, Vieira, to just say a couple of words of welcome. Um, this, is, this program, the ACE program, is really an exemplary uh, program. I thought about when I started business as an attorney that when I went into private practice, I truly could have used the services of ACE. I learned all that I needed to know about law, but in terms of putting the business together, I was learning as I went along. And so this um, center actually provides a service of having the, the resources made available to students and to the community to help individuals to establish really credible, viable businesses and to know the pitfalls, the things to look out for. I, I learned on the job, but I watched um, other uh, private practitioners uh, businesses win and if they had had some of the advice and the guidance and the principles of business that you get through a center like this, um, I'm sure they would have been a lot more successful. This um, um, academic center for entrepreneurship is so great at providing the types of special support and I'm extremely pleased to see the, the turnout uh, because some of the services are workshops, and I hope that you will avail yourself of these workshops that we're having this evening. I'm really pleased to see several of our staff members here. Um, I was accompanied by our Director of Human Resources, um, Dr. Tafa Awolaju, I got that name right, how did I get that? Um, who walked over with me here this evening, and um, everybody here already knows uh, Dr. Blackburn, and uh, we have our chair of business administration, uh, Chair Cecil Leonard. Uh, so, or is it Cecil? Cecil? Yes, uh, Leonard. Um, I'm really pleased to uh, mention that our we have some other people here as well. Our us, I mentioned our assistant dean uh, for business and information technology, Dr. Mike Vieira, and um, I want to uh, mention that one of our professors, Professor Carol Grande, I saw her walk in. She is, and I really would like to thank uh, Chef Caresimo um, and his. Um, staff who have actually provided the supports, um, all of the services and the catering that you see here on our culinary college program. Our former chair of our board of trustees is here, Mr. John Alexander. I'm sorry, Mr. John Almeida. Um, I, yes, yes, in the back. And um, I'd like to acknowledge our honorary keynote speakers, the Cardi brothers, and our distinguished award um, recipients. 
um, I just want to thank you so much for coming out and being a part of this fantastic uh, center's programs. I would like to ask for Assistant Dean Vieira, if you would come forward and just say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. Can we give Sarah a nice warm welcome? And It's always uh, a little stressful, I think, to try to uh, catch everybody in a crowd like this and, and get the names right. And I give you credit. You got about a 90, so that wasn't bad. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Uh, you did very well. Thank you. Um, I just I don't want to take a whole lot of time. I do want to thank Phoebe for all the work that she's done on this. this. Any type of undertaking like this is absolutely incredible in terms of the amount of time that it takes to, uh, to pull it all together. The little miracles that happened, the, you know, Peg Coro calling on the, the Cotty brothers, we appreciate you coming back on campus again. You've been such good supporters to us. Um, you know, folks like Nicole, and I don't know if you're going to thank all the people, but the folks who, who greeted you when you came in, you know, tried to get your name down and so you can give the numbers to the state and make them happy with our, with our county. Um, we've had a couple of major events this year. We had a business after hours, and it poured, and it was really an awful torrential rain. Um, we had a business luncheon for our graduating students, and it poured. It was kind of torrential rain. We, uh, we scheduled this event tonight, and it rained this morning, but the sun is coming out, so we're getting a little bit better with our weather forecasting. Um, however, we get to compete with, with the governor, who's appearing right down the road at Diamond uh, Regional Vocational Technical High School. So um, we know you're here, because it's a small enough crowd. He wouldn't know if you were there anyway. So you can, if you see the governor, tell him you were there, and we'll vouch for you. It'll be okay. So. Um, Phoebe, I'm going to do the introductions. Yep, thank you, and have a good night. We'll be milling around. If you need anything, we really try to respond to the needs of the community. We really try to respond to the business community especially. And this, um, you know, ACE Center has really been a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful thing. And, and I give Phoebe all the credit. I just get to come up here, wear the suit, and talk. So, you know, she did all the work. Thank you, Phoebe. The purpose of this evening was really to try to get the community members together. Um, they, they've mentioned ACE in their speaking, and you may not know what that is. It's on the next slide. It stands for Academic Center for Entrepreneurship. And um, up until now, for two years, we've been concentrating and focusing our efforts of ACE on the student, the students that come to BCC that decide, um, yes, they would like to uh, start their own business, we, but we don't know, they don't know where to begin. We give them the resources like we hook them up with uh, the, the counselor from the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center who comes in uh, monthly or so to meet with students who just don't know where to begin and she gets them started, uh, talks to them analyzing uh, their thoughts and ideas. So, but what I'm getting at is that we really have focused on the students up until now. So this is our first attempt to to draw in the community. And there were so many ideas that we wanted to have awards and we wanted to have um, uh, an expo, exhibition, uh, bring in the support services. And there was just so much we had to, wanted to do, so we decided to do it all in one evening. And that's why I called it an expo, because to me that, that, that um, designates a lot of activity going on. So it, it's a combination this evening of um, exhibitions, awards to be giving out, that that were chosen from the community, uh, workshops after the evening event, and some re uh, refreshments also. So that the purpose tonight really is to, or the purpose of the Expo and of the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship is really to encourage entrepreneurship in the area. It's to promote it the best that we can. We have um, a lot of services. Uh, the Chamber pr promotes entrepreneurship, uh, the business development centers, the Office of Economic Development, there are so many agencies that promote entrepreneurship, and we're just one more. And we have a wonderful, BCC at least has a wonderful audience of people that um, we can identify as potential <coughs> entrepreneurs. So we, have, we do have that, um, that uh, audience of people that we have the students that come by. The students in the, in the uh, community college are students that were most likely born and brought up in the area. 
they get educated in the area, and they remain in the area. So they're really important for us to identify and, and to teach them the skills of entrepreneurship so that they will remain in the area and, uh, and flourish as a business. So that is actually the purpose of tonight. Um, business itself has changed so much in years recently. The technology has, it, it's different to be an entrepreneur today and to enter that market than it was in the years past. Technology has just made business portable, and so that changes the, the scheme quite a bit. Uh, E-commerce allows for an infinite customer base. That, that's not how it was in the past, I'm sure. The entrepreneurs that have been around for a while, the small business owners, uh, have found such a drastic change in the landscape over the years. And so we're learning as we go uh, to teach those new skills. Uh, they say that there's a softer side of business in that uh, with, with, with the baby boomers uh, owning businesses, it's not just about profit anymore. It may have been in the past owning a business was about making a profit. We're so socially conscious these days um, in this generation. So it's, it's a lot more than that. That's, that has changed on the business scene. And, and the individuality of a person where working for a large corporation in the past was very stable, and, and it's less stable now. So owning your own business looks a little bit um, more enlightening, you, you, something that you might want to take on. There are um, a couple of books that I just want to mention if anybody's interested. I don't have it on the slide, but I'll just pinch. It was in the Entrepreneur uh, Magazine this month, and I read it, and I thought it was interesting, so I thought I would throw it out there. Uh, the Land as God Made It, Jamestown and the Birth of America, James Horn and Walker. It sounds interesting, it's gonna be summer reading for myself, and, it, and, it, and it's supposedly about how coming to America and discovering America, not discovering, but settling in America, was really an entrepreneurial activity. And it, to me, it just sounds interesting. I thought I would throw it out so that you know it was out there. And there's also a book, The Entrepreneurial Imperative. It's by Paul Schramm. He is uh, the president of the Ewing Kaufman Foundation in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. And I was lucky enough to go out there. It's the largest um, philanthropic agency having to do with entrepreneurship in the country. And I was, I was very happy to go out there and visit with them. So the, the president has written a book, The Entrepreneurial Imperative, and it uh, sounds like excellent reading, so if anybody's interested in, in those. The ACE program is what we're talking about, Academic Center of Entrepreneurship. I started it uh, two, two and a half years ago. Uh, it's still rolling. We have um, a lot of student-centered, student so up until now, we have uh, what we call the PATH program, and uh, it leads a student through four steps, all provided here at BCC. And those four steps, we feel, if, if a student has gone through those four steps and they're able to successfully open a business, the first step, uh, just real quickly, is to set them up with dear Melinda Nails from the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center, who is an excellent resource, and she comes once a month, as I said, speaks to the students and uh, gives them some beginning direction and then works with them on their business plan. And uh, the next step is, um, Mentor program, and that just started this year. It started with a grant, uh, which I which I had put in for and was lucky enough to receive a grant from uh, Cornell University and the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation um, collaboration. Two companies. So we uh, started a grant where we have a mentor program, and the student then gets to sit and finish their business plan or continue with their business plan or continue talking about it with an instructor from BCC. So it's a one-on-one. -on -one. I really want to grow that mentor program. But the grant does run out, so we'll have to be a little bit creative to find ways to support that. If there is anybody in the audience uh, who would like to serve as a mentor to BCC students, I've spoken to people from Northeastern. They have a, a top-notch program. Uh, they say that, that uh, entrepreneurs want to help and uh, mentor students. If anybody's interested in that, please speak to me later on. Uh, I'd like to build that. That might, that might be a priority for next year to build that mentor program. The uh, next step is uh, we have SCORE, uh, uh, Service Corps Retired Executives come in and do a course now every semester uh, on different stages of business, excuse me, business, business ownership. And that's been running for about four or five semesters. And the last step is uh, we have what they call desk incubators. 
Uh, we don't offer a lot at this point. We offer a desk and a telephone and filing cabinet and computer uh, and some secretarial work to students who want to start their own business. We have two desks um, in our center right now. So it's young, it's growing. Uh, it's really an interesting program and uh, we like to collaborate with people from, from the community. The, um, we also have the Center for Business and Industry, who we worked with this semester, who have put together a lot of entrepreneurial courses, uh, a, a cluster of entrepreneurial courses, which they uh, they focus, they target the uh, different groups, the women groups, the uh, Latino groups, the uh, small businesses, and, and that's growing. That's a wonderful um, addition to what we already offer, and that's growing. We also have done a lot with K through 12, and, and that, is really rewarding. Condenta High School has an excellent uh, uh, entrepreneurial course. It started very small and now they have standing room only for two courses that they offer in entrepreneurship. And they bring their students on two or three times on campus two or three times a semester. Um, and, and, and it's just wonderful to have them. And they have then progressed from Inventive High and then we, I, my work study student is a student from Inventive High who was an entrepreneurial in an entrepreneurial course and now she's working for me 10 hours a week in the center as a work site. K through 12, we also uh, are starting brand new with our Center for Business and Industry this summer. We're starting uh, Kids College, and we're also starting um, an Upward Bound program. We're not starting the programs. The programs are already there, um, and we're going to be offering some uh, entrepreneurial offerings for the students, for the young students coming to those programs. So we were, one last thing, we're going to we're going to start a seminar series uh, on entrepreneurial uh, topics, and we have two already. One is on June 21st, Fundamentals of Money by Lisa Adromalis from MW Financial, and another one, September 6, 2007, Business Continuity with Joseph A. Marshall from J. Marshall Associates in the city. So those are coming up. If you have, if you'd like to hear more about that or or, or uh, join us for those, we haven't started the registration. But if you want, would like to hear more about that, you can contact uh, the center or speak to the Make sure you take one of our brochures that has all that information for you. So that's enough about the center. You know why we're here. Uh, it's our first time out. I'm, I'm so happy to see everybody here. Thank you so much for coming. And a big part of tonight will be awards. And the Hottie brothers are here as keynote speakers. I've um, asked them to say whatever they would like to say, but they are true entrepreneurs. They started very small. Just speaking tonight, uh, Nick was the fourth employee of Hardy Brothers. <coughs> a father, a grandmother, a father, a brother, and Nick Hardy. And one store, and they've taken it so far beyond that. So it really was up to them. Um, I did hear, and you can correct me, um, a slight reference that you were told by your father, this is a business that supports one of us. It's your challenge to go out and turn it into a business that supports the three of you. And that's what you did, and, and you did a really fine job of it. And we know that you're up to about six stores, uh, so many square feet, over, over 100,000 square feet in your store in Swansea alone, but um, you've done a great job of it. And if there's anything you can share with the people, because there are many people here that have, that have come in that I know are interested in owning their own business. From, they, they've come in from, not so much from the college, but from the community seeing the advertising. So if you can share with them anything uh, that works, that, you, that you know, what's, most, what's most important. Is it quality? Is it service? Right. What, what's what's most important? Then? What what best practice can one best practice can you share with them? But right now, I will turn it over to you. I'll let you uh, get up and share some stories or some information. Spot. Sarah needs furniture. Sarah, okay. You just got in. <laughs> After this, it's those over till 9.30, we can make it. 
first of all, congratulations to all the nice recipients, or one recipients. I need to correct this just a little bit, because it may make me sound really old. The company was started in 1928 by a grandmother. When I graduated, I happen to be the oldest. My name is Nick, this is Ron, this is Pete. We stand this way, we speak this way, we were born this way. We, we do everything this way, you know. So you have, and if you look at our ads, I'm always on facing on the left. Ron's always in the middle. He's just always to the right. But I was the first one, since I'm the oldest, I was the first one to get out of college. When I graduated from college, we had three full-time employees. It was my dad, his brother, who was his partner, and their secretary. And so I was the next full-timer to come out. So at that point, we had, well, when I got out, we had three full-timers. We had a few part-timers. Today, we have between six and 700. So I guess that's why we're here. We're entrepreneurs, as we were saying before, an overnight sensation only took about 78 years to get here. A lot of hard work and dedication by a lot of people. And you know, we're here, we're, you know, okay, we work hard and we do all that stuff, but we couldn't do it without the rest of the group. And we have some very good people that work for us. Our distribution center manager, for example, has been with us for 30, 25 years. He's uh, 40 years old. Uh, he started when he was so maybe 41. I think he started when he was 15. Looked across the street from us. He started working part time. Worked for us from, from through high school, college. He'd come home on weekends. Now he runs a distribution center. The first salesperson we ever hired still works for us. She's been there just about 25 years also. So it's we have a group of people that work with us for us together that are very dedicated, very hardworking, that know the program. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Because when you have to make changes in your business, sometimes it's better to have people that don't know anything about what you do. As we say, okay, fire everybody, hire all the people. That, that sounds good on paper. And sometimes we actually do it. We go into a room and say, okay, you're all fired. Okay, now, who wants this job, who wants that job, and who wants this other job? Because as you could probably see over the last bunch of years that we've been around in the business, our business has changed. Every year we get a little bit bigger, some years we get a lot bigger. You, you grow, you, you open new stores, you open new departments, you open new markets, so to speak, and you have to have people who can relearn or re-engineer themselves, and sometimes it's very difficult. So. Sometimes we like to just go out and just wipe the slate clean and you hire people that don't know that that was the way we used to do it. And we still have people in the company, like again, yeah, the first salesperson, it's a woman who yelled at her all the time, Fran, she said, yeah, but that's not the way we did it before. Well, it is not the way you did it before, but this is the way we have to do it today. Anyway, I don't have to get off on a tangent, I apologize. But they call us Nairobi, so I have to get back to the little speech that we do have. They call us Nairobi. Nairobi comes from the first two, it's because you're new, we have to tell you this. It comes from the first two letters of each of our names. When we were kids, our parents bought us a rowboat. And for those of you who know anything about boats, and you have water out here, a rowboat has oars. And it was a Freudian thing. In order to get from point A to point B, anywhere in life, you have to work. There was no motor on this boat, and there was no sail. And by the way, in cars, we don't have sales. We have everyday low prices. <laughs> Our great aunt decided that we should have a name on this boat. She took the first two letters, remember the first two letters of each of our names. And I can make our rope for Ron, P, E, for P. She called it night rope, like a rope on a boat, because it was a boat. And later on, as we started to get into the company, and in the early 70s, we needed a name for our in-house advertising agency. So we called it Nairobi. She was getting older and we thought this would be cute and we decided to do that. And then in the mid 80s, and when we get into what's, what's more important, quality selection service, we like to call it quality selection service pricing, whatever else you have to do for the consumer because that's why we're here. We were looking for something that nobody else had. Any business owner can get up there and say, we give the best service, okay. We give the longest warranty, but well, whatever your warranty is, we'll add one day, now we give the longest warranty. We get the lowest prices. Well, we cut you the price by a dollar, we have the lowest price. So we call it an umbrella. And we like to call it quality selection, service, and price. And we wanted something for the advertising that nobody else had. The only thing we could find that nobody else had or could have was us. And we looked in the mirror, and the first time we did this, we said, not even do we want us. So anyway. Now I want to 
Yeah, they, they, yes, yeah, they, they want to know what the heck we're doing. But. So we were looking for something nobody else had, and we were all sitting around the table, and we came up with, why don't we get Nairobi and make it Nairobi, which is really the way it should be, and go on the air with it. So we had our great friend Salty Bryan, for those of you who do know Salty, he did pass away, and we miss him. He, at the beginning, he's been our family friend for many, many years, but at the beginning, he would help us do the ads. He really did the ad, we'd show up. And then after a while, he started to joke. He said, you're replacing me. And after a while, in a sense, we did replace him. Because then we, you know, it was a transition. And this Nairobi thing sort of took off. And took off, and I don't know, one, one into the one lake to the other side of the lake, and sometimes in the middle, I think we drowned. But we're, we're having a good time with it. And then, for those of you in business, you have to have a good time. Because you go to work every day, and it's more than half of our life, it's like three quarters of our life, and you live whatever it is that you do. Whether you're an attorney, you're a teacher, or a professor, or this, or that, or the other thing, we have to sell furniture. And I have to make uh, a, a, a training class with our sales staff next week, and that's how we divide up the company. I think Ron will get into probably a little bit more of that. But I have to talk to the sales staff next week, and the thing that I'm starting off with is that we still sell furniture. Nothing has changed. We buy furniture, we show the furniture, we sell the furniture, we deliver it, we make the customer happy. With all these changes that have gone on in the world, our job is to sell furniture to the consumer so that they're comfortable with it. You can buy a pen, and you can have a pen. Nobody buys a pen to own a pen. You buy a pen to write with. Nobody buys a dresser in a bedroom to have a dresser. You buy a dresser to put clothes in. If you didn't have any clothes, you wouldn't need this stupid dresser. If you didn't have to write, you wouldn't need the pen. You could use the computer, but we have a pen. Now you can have a nice pen. You have the pen because it's function. You have a nice pen because it's emotional. So these are the things that we have to teach our people, which that's a little bit different. However, in our company, we still sell furniture. That's really what we do. We could go on forever. We're going to try to keep this as short as possible, really. Uh, our uh, staff, our biggest challenge inside the company is to take that old school stuff that Nick was talking about and transfer that to today. So you get what I typically call propeller heads in the Department of IT, and, and I, I say that with, with uh, some passion, in the respect that they like to sit there and design things, but they don't talk to people a lot. Well, when we started, when the company was started, not us, but when the company was started, it was a little ahead of its time in that it was bilingual. It's because our grandparents didn't speak English. So they spoke Italian. And now today it's becoming you know, more popular again. But the fact of the matter is when we go out and speak to groups, whether they be business people or even students, and we were in an elementary school today, this morning, reading to the kids, and, and actually all last week, and the one thing we try to emphasize to them is that they have a native tongue, don't lose it. You need to speak English. English is definitely the language, and we travel all over the world for our business, and I don't care what country you're in, economically, English is it. But the fact of the matter is, and I don't say that in a cocky way, but it's just reality, the other part of the economics is not to lose that native tongue, whatever it may be. Not only Italian, but Spanish, or whatever the language is that they have, it is incredibly valuable. We probably speak about 15 different languages in our company, and unfortunately, the three of us only speak one and a half. But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, it's very critical in today's market because we are in a worldwide economy. We do business virtually all over the globe, and we had to take those things that our grandparents and parents taught us and try to take that and move that into this generation. So one of the biggest, one of the most difficult things, I should say, is actually taking this new technology, which is so true about the advancement of computers and everything else in terms of how you have to do business today to survive, be it the economics or the technology side of it, and not lose sight of the fact that you're still dealing with people. And dealing with people is critical, because one of the most valuable things that you can do in terms of starting a business is understand that most of it is all local, especially when you're first starting it. And it is amazing to us, colleges and universities that we go to, where 30 and 40 percent of those students have never had a job. And one side will look at it, oh gee, my lucky because I've got this golden spoon in my mouth. And it is a, from a business perspective, when somebody went out and getting a job, it is probably the worst thing that could ever happen to somebody. So the point is, is that we've got to take the old, melt it with the new, and that's really our job today. So we're hiring people and doing things in our company 
that we have to hire people that have, we have no clue what they're doing. We know what they're doing in terms of from a top-down view, but I mean, when you get to that, the reason I mentioned that earlier point about the technical issue with the IT people is because you really don't know when you get down to the nitty-gritty of what these people are coding and what they're writing. I couldn't sit there and tell them what to do for love the money, but the fact of the matter is, is you have to manage them. But you have to have that level of technology in your company and make sure that they understand what the customers really want. Because as Nick said earlier, it's all about making that customer happy. It was all about making that customer happy in 1928, and it's all about making that customer happy today. And they're looking at the three companies that are getting the awards tonight. If you look at the, those companies in terms of their, their, their striving for excellence and the level of service that they give, and look at the age of those companies, in some cases, it's a feat just to get from when they started to now and still be in existence, let alone you know, deliver an exceptional level of service. So as entrepreneurs, we would encourage you to make sure you've got good experience, go out and work for the type of business if you're, you're fortunate enough to, to get that experience, because without the work experience, it's gonna be very difficult to start a company, let alone even get a job. Uh, so I'll hand it off to Peter. Does it? The people from Webster Bank, they're here, the gentlemen are here, and one of the questions he mentioned to us when we got here was, I think he said he writes for a newsletter, writes a, a column. And the column is about uh, how do you succeed in business. And we mentioned to him that our dad told us when we were very young, and I think he mentioned that uh, the company was very small, and he said, okay, it's okay to support your dad and his brother, but now when your dad uh, retires pretty soon, you still have to take care of dad, he has to take care of his wife. So that means there has to be money in the bank to pay them. They have to retire. Your uncle needs to retire, he needs to be paid. So we have a company right now that supports these two families. The only way you could do this, and this was our education, uh, our on-the-job training, if you will, is you have to grow the business to pay this bill. Then you have to grow it even further to get your salary, your salary, and your salary. And guess what? Right now, you, all three of you live at home. But when you move out, there's all these other expenses. So you have to grow it even further. And that was kind of our kick in the pants to get going. And really kind of gave us, gave us the reason to grow the business. And now we're doing the same thing with our own staff trying to grow the company so that they have the opportunities that we had to really excel, to grow, and really just reach for the stars and do whatever they want to do. The basics of it is, if you show up every day and you work every day, the job will be there. When you stop going, the business won't be there anymore, it'll, it'll go to pot. And that was, the, that was how we were brought up. Mr. Marshall was speaking with him earlier also, one of the recipients tonight, and he mentioned, uh, but it's going to be fun. And where's Mr. Marshall? Is he still here? Ah, there you go. And, uh, and, and so we have, a, we have a DVD that we like to play for you because we try to have fun also, not only with our commercials, which we do with our customers, but also internally. There's a little snippet in there for those of you who knew Salty. Uh, there's a scene in there from one of our employee recognition dinners that we just had one a couple of uh, nights ago, actually Sunday night. So we try and celebrate with our own people because we not only have to market to our customer base, people who walk in the door to put money in the till so that we can pay our bills and pay the banks, uh, but also, we have to market to our own people. We have to make sure that they're happy with us, that they're happy with what they're doing. And as Mr. Marshall said, uh, so I propose, you got to have fun. So it's just a little short piece we'd like to play. If you'd like to turn that up for us, please. <laughs> Hey, 
anyways, uh, thank you. You're going to have fun. You're going to really enjoy yourself. You're going to be smart. 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 Thanks so much for listening. Pleasure to be here. Thank you.
he and I used to play soccer. I used to teach my play, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we got together, uh, and we said, you know what? This is what I know. You know, can we make a difference? And when we really thought of it, we really knew that we could make a difference. When I tell you it wasn't easy, so all of you that are thinking of starting up a business, it's not easy. <laughs> make sure you have plenty of money when you first start out. And uh, when we got together, we said, we can make a difference. We know we can. Why wait? And we felt an obligation to our community that because we could do it, we can create job opportunities for people. So when we first started out, very difficult when the market took uh, took a downward trend, which was in 2001, September 11th, September 11th 2001, we realized this is going to be difficult, but today we're happy to say, and we see it, we measure ourselves every Christmas time because we have the company Christmas party and we see how many people we're inviting, and this year we had it in a big place. We're up to 34 people, which is not a lot, but it's better than zero. And this coming year we expect it to grow up to about 50-something people and we'll continue to grow. We're actually looking at a new building in the industrial park in New Bedford. And it's because we firmly believe that the ideas we had, uh, the things we knew how we could grow the business, we could make it effective to create, more importantly, uh, for job opportunities for our community. We know we can go work for anybody we want. We're, I'm not bragging, but we're talented people. We can get a job, we can work for somebody. But it's more than that, it's not about the money. It's really about how do you help the community you live in. And we believe the best way we could do that is by creating job opportunities for our community. And, and we're hoping that we'll continue along the path that we've been, which is create jobs for the community and the community as a whole will get better. So thank you. I accept this award on behalf of not just myself and Tino, but our whole company. We are successful not because of ourselves, but because of the, all the people that we uh, work with, and the groups of people that have been very supportive, like the New Bedford Economic Development Council. So thank you very much. You. I would just like to, to, we started this five years ago. Again, it was a little bit scary times right after September 11th, but, um, and we had a piece of paper, a business plan, that's all it was, but again, I'd like to thank Nancy at New Bedford Development Council and also Carlos Cunha right now with uh, BCP Bank, but he was at Sovereign Bank. They believed in us. We needed someone to give us a little hand, and I'm very appreciative of that. So thanks very much again. Thank you very much. You well deserve that award, and I'm sure in uh, I'm sure we'll see you next year and the years to come. And good luck in a very competitive market. The next award, the Cornerstone Entrepreneur, again was um, the idea behind that was to find someone who's been an entrepreneur for more than 10 years. They're pretty settled. They're, they're pretty uh, stable business, and uh, they offer a very good product. So we expect that they will be around again, around in the near future and the far future. We expect them to be a cornerstone of our community. The nominations came in and we've chosen Joseph A. Marshall who from J. Marshall Associates. He, they offer uh, insurance and financial services. Joseph Marshall is a graduate of BCC, an alumnus of BCC. He's gone on, as we said, grew up in the area, started a business in the, the area, came to school in the area, started a business in the area, and remains here. And that's what we like to see, especially when, when we do open up these doors to events, we always get flooded with BCC alumna, alumnus, and, and it's just excellent to see that. So um, Joseph Marshall has been in business since 1989. He's been growing. Uh, from what I understand, it's... Uh, insurance and financial services, leaning a lot towards financial services uh, these days. I can uh, understand there'd be a lot of need for that. And uh, he is also active in the community, was part of uh, Fall River Office of Economic Development, has been active in the BCC Foundation, Fall River Development Corps, and he, he 
presently offers free workshops to the community. So he's a wonderful um, addition to the community as an entrepreneur uh, give, and, and a good example of giving back to the community as well. So I'd like to present the cornerstone entrepreneur to Joseph Marshall. This is, uh, uh, and the reason I write things down is because I could go on and on and on, and this, this restricts me. It's, it's not a crutch. It, it really is a good idea. I learned this uh, a long time ago. But something like this, this is a very humbling experience because when you're in business or in life, you run the race with your head down, and every so often you look up to see where you are. And uh, when I got the call from Phoebe, I thought, uh, you know, this is a wonderful thing, and, and a very good friend of mine, uh, nominated me and I, I appreciate that because you don't know well I don't know I, I speak for myself you don't know how you're perceived by other people I mean you, you think you know but you really don't until you're in a position like this and, and you got a good sense of how you are so this is this is very humbling and I appreciate that um, people are motivated by by different things they're motivated by money fame fear and, and I can share with you my fear of failure was my motive, is my motivator, continues to be my motivator. You never stop because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know if the sale is going to happen tomorrow. You don't know. You really don't. So whatever your motivation is, um, and if it works, you stick with it. Um, and I've been, I've been fortunate uh, to learn a few things over the years. Even though I started my own practice in 89, I was doing it for someone else in 1975. So what I really did is I learned the things I wanted to do with my other employer and the things I did want to do. Uh, and, and it worked, in my opinion, it's worked out. But the things that I've learned um, in starting the, my practice in 1989, family support, whatever you're going to do, in it, whatever it is, uh, you have to have the support of the family. I can remember coming home, my wife Joanne is here, and um, actually, she was a bigger supporter of it than I was because it was like, I think I'm going to try this. No, nope, it's okay. We don't make any money. I'll work. Then I'll... So her support was, uh, it got me off, off the chair, knowing that I did have a fallback. Because those of you who, who know me, I'm not the, I, I just don't try everything. I usually try something and do it forever. But anyway, uh, without her support and the support of the children, um, that gave me the, the, what I needed. I needed a fallback position, and, and that fear of failure drove me, and she supported me. Surround yourself uh, with good people. Uh, there's, there's no magic to it. Uh, we've hired people over the years, and you have to start somewhere. So you start with resumes, so you start with interviews, you ask for referrals. Um, the interview itself, to me, is, is the most important part because we don't hire off a resume. We hire off the interview. In the interview, you learn a lot about people. Because with us, when I'm, when I'm speaking to someone, I want to know how they fit into the organization. Uh, yeah, it's important to, uh, to know, you know what the person's qualities are. But the interview, if somebody has a good resume but a bad attitude, or someone has a bad resume, not a bad resume, but a, a mediocre resume and a great attitude, I'm going to hire the person with the attitude. Because you can. You can develop that, you can turn that into a very productive employee. And I have to say, of the people we have at our agency since 1989, everyone's still there. And we lost one to a reload. But other than that, everyone is still there. And I'm very proud of that, because I don't think they'd be there if they weren't happy. I don't pay them that much. That's my point. Um, <laughs> another issue is uh, don't be greedy. Share. I, I learn, and again, this is. This is learned. This is not. This hasn't been taught to me. You just you just learn. Don't be greedy and share. And that's it, sharing with the employees, sharing with uh, your clients. Um, it, there's enough for everybody. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you die rich. It really doesn't. I mean, but if you have a good time on the way, that's that's very important. So don't don't be greedy. Um, ego. Ego is not a bad thing. I mean, sometimes we use it in the, in the contents of a bad thing, but it really isn't. It's really the fuel 
that feeds the fire. And it's lo and as long as it's used correctly, it's a good thing. It can drive people under control. Um, never be satisfied. Always have, always have a passion. Always enjoy what you do. Uh, that's something, and, and we spoke about it earlier, but people who are passionate about, a, about their jobs will be the best in their trade or profession because they love the process more than they like the money. And, and I'm sincere when I say this. The funny thing about passion is that money usually follows it. So if you, are, if you like what you do and you become the best at what you do, you get paid for your time. It's just, it's ironic, but that's exactly how it is. Don't be driven by the money first, be driven by the passion, whatever it is that you like to do. People who love money more than their work spend their uh, entire lives in misery and usually end up earning much less than those who followed their heart in the first place. Uh, the greatest thing about being passionate about your work is that it really isn't a job, it's fun. To love what you do and feel that it matters, how could anything else be more fun? And it really is. So I appreciate this immensely and hope to uh, be around for quite some time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marshall, and we hope you're around for quite some time with BCC and, <laughs> and with your company, and I'm sure that you will be. The last um, category, the benevolent entrepreneur, was, as I said, a little bit more interesting. We, we had a thought what the um, might come in would be people that were very giving to the community, and, and we did have that come in. But we also had some nominations, more than one that came in that were nominated by their employees. Because as the Cardi brothers have said, as, to, as Mr. Marshall just said, your employees are really, if, if they're good and they're behind you, they're really an asset to your success. And when you turn it around and treat your employees like families, which is what we got from this nomination, you treat your employees like family, always have, and everything just works so well because they're family. And that's what happened with this nomination. More than one came in to this in this category, or, or more than one came in nominated by employees. So when we chose the benevolent entrepreneur, it was Mr. Michael Albert from Haradite Industries, and his employees as a group nominated him. And I've heard some wonderful stories about how he treats them, and I will I know he's modest about this, but I will let him say it in his own words, but you are very much appreciated by your employees, always have been. So congratulations for that, and, and we award you for that. I have notes, not to talk long or short, but just to remember what I'm supposed to say. That's the advantage of being old, except I can't find the notes. Ta -da. Oh, well. Oh, yes, I did. I, when I was called originally by Professor Blackburn, I said no because I do not consider myself benevolent. I never have been, and I won't tell you what my family calls me. But benevolent is not one of the adjectives that are used. 38 years ago, I started at Howardite in June 1969. And honestly, I was a virgin salesman, relatively clueless, and I have kept that title. But I was taught not by one person, but by generations of people at Haradite over the last 38 years. The young lady here in a red blazer is the fourth generation of her family trying to teach us how to run a company. They taught me textiles. They taught me manufacturing. They taught me it was safe 
to be honest and say, I don't know. They taught me that you can say, help. And they taught me that it was safe to say, we're in trouble and we have to change the way we do what we do and all of us have to do it together. And they taught me, I did not teach them. I remain clueless. The one thing they had trouble teaching me and still have a problem with is patience. I'm not good at that. I will never be good at that, but they're still working at it. Benevolent, absolutely not. Paying back and being appreciative of people from whom I learned, who I respect, and in many cases who indeed I love is what business is about. Fun, everything is fun. But to have people that you respect, that you like, that teach me every day, it's what it's about. They really taught me that respect is not the same thing as life or death. It's more important. And that is the culture that they gave me when I came to Haradite. And hopefully my son, who is the third generation, fourth generation, fourth generation, will continue. I thank you for the award but it's not benevolent. It's just saying to people, thank you. And I think we must might have to change the name of that category <laughs> to fit to fit you because I thought it was a wonderful wonderful tribute to be nominated by your employees. I thought it was a wonderful uh, thing that that after working that long for someone, you could really still appreciate their talents and and, and their the, you know their their abilities. And so I think I might we might have to change or add or add another category. The last thing that, uh, there's one more award that I would like to uh, give, and that is for the first honor roll, the ACE, the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship honor roll, and I'd like to award that to the Cardi brothers tonight. I'll tell you a little bit about what our plan is. Um, if you've seen other entrepreneurship centers, uh, Babson and Wellesley has a nice uh, display. Uh, Springfield Technical Community College in Springfield has a beautiful entrepreneurial display and, and I've been in different places across the country and what they do, <coughs> excuse me, quite nicely is uh, they will display uh, the entrepreneurial awards and so we will work with you in the coming future and uh, each one of you in the near future to just get, it could be a, a picture of what your business looked like in 1928, um, it could be uh, the first uh, product, a piece of your polymeric uh, product or something, but we'll work with you in the near future to, um, to have a nice display at Bristol Community College, and this will be the first year, and we've called it the honor roll, so. many people to thank, and I won't go on very long, but I will uh, thank all of the people that have helped me tonight, uh, especially um, a student that I have that has volunteered her time with the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship, who has, I, there is not a chance I could put something like this together without her. I'm an accounting professor. I don't do events. I, I have a very difficult, you know, Professor Garand, what I'm saying. It's very difficult to, to, to see this side of it. I had a wonderful volunteer who helps me. Uh, she's a student at BCC, and she helped me through this. So I'd like to thank Laura Petrucci for all of her help. This, 
like to thank all of these students and others, uh, workers from staff members from BCC that have come out just to just to you know help carry the load today. There's many of them here, and I won't name you all. And I, I lastly, I really want you to encourage. I want to encourage you to take a look and stop and speak to our, the people at our table, the people, who, um, the dis uh, display tables. They have come along to offer advice, answer questions. Uh, uh, send you in the right direction. So I really do encourage on your way to the food and beverage, which will be served very shortly. I'm not sure if it's all set up, but it's all set up. So on your way there, please stop by and speak to the people at our display table. They're full of information to help you get you started on your business or to keep you going on your business. Um, so please, I encourage you to stop and speak with them. And um, lastly, at 7 o'clock, there are some of you that have registered for the workshops. They are in room K119 and room L108. If you're signed up for that workshop, please see me. I have a list, and we will direct you. I'll be roaming around here in the next, uh, uh, it'll be an hour before they start. If you're all here, uh, we could start at the, um, earlier, but otherwise, uh, see me, and uh, we'll see who's here for the workshops, and we'll direct you in the, in the right place. And that concludes for the evening. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you.